request from a male requesting that animal control contact him via telephone. Uh, our on animal control officer called this subject and he identified himself as the person depicted in the video and the owner of the dog. He was interviewed over the phone and then later in person. Um, he made some statements about the reason why he was frustrated with his dog. Um, the dog got out of his fence. He was late for work and he was frustrated. Uh, officers went out to the scene later that day to check the welfare of the dog. Um, our animal control officers um, are certified vet techs and the officer that went out on scene has 16 years experience as a vet tech. She did an evaluation of the dog and didn't note any injuries on the dog. Uh, the dog seemed to be in good health. The, the dog didn't seem to be afraid of the owner. And based on that information, she issued a citation to the male subject for failing to have a dog license and also for failing to have current rabies vaccinations. Following that contact, a meeting was made with the prosecuting attorney's office to staff this case for further investigation. And it was determined that a citation was going to be issued to the male subject uh, for animal cruelty, which is a misdemeanor. It's, it's, it's his first offense. And that the dog was going to be seized per Idaho code and taken to uh, the shelter. The next day on the 9th, um, officers responded out to the address where the subject lived along with the dog. He was not home, however, the subject's brother was there and the dog was there and the dog was seized and taken to West Valley. Later on last night, after 7 p.m., the um, subject called our animal control officer when she was off duty, inquiring about the location of his dog and why the dog had been seized. And it was arranged that we were going to meet with him today uh, to issue him a misdemeanor citation uh, per the request of the prosecuting attorney's office. Um, earlier this morning, he was issued that citation with a court appearance date. Um, and that's the end of our investigation at this point. Are there any questions? So it's an active pending case. Um, he has been cited. Um, that information can be released from the prosecutor after they have a chance to actually review the case. Do you know if there's a case number for this case? Is that prosecutor question? Um, I don't know the case number, um, but you can do a public records request uh, through dispatch after we're done here today. And they can get that information to you. Um, I'm a dog owner, and it seemed very um, unnecessary to me, not knowing the backstory. However, I have had my dog get out of the yard. I didn't do what this gentleman did, but um, I understand his frustration. I don't understand the way that he took his frustration. What's kind of been the general reaction from the community to this? Not sure if you can speak to that. I think you're okay. Yeah, I'll have the chief answer that. So this uh, expectedly gained a lot of viral attention on social media, which, uh, which is what prompted us to, to have this press conference today. And the, to answer your question, sir, the, the community is outraged, as well as members of this police department the mayor, the city council, um, you know, we're not gonna tolerate animal cruelty. I, as Also as a dog owner myself, um, there's ways to, to train a dis or discipline a dog. However, like Lieutenant Winfield said, it's not, uh, what, what the actions of this uh, suspect did in this case um, are not acceptable. Idaho law prohibits that type of conduct. And, but what I would urge the public to, to hear me on this is that we are doing everything we can to investigate this matter and take it serious. I would also urge the public to refrain from going after this individual if it becomes public and who he is, if, I, if, if his identity becomes public, because that poses a, another substantial risk to, 
to him and his family because obviously there's a lot of emotions involved. Uh, we are doing our job. The public needs to be confident in myself and, and my staff in this organization to take this serious and to bring justice forward in this case. Uh, I, I understand everyone's fr frustration and concerns, but the last thing we need is a mob to basically take over social media and take the law into their hands. In this case, this was a misdemeanor, not committed in any of the officer's presence. Under current Idaho law, uh, only a felony uh, that, is not, that is not committed in an officer's presence, we can make an immediate arrest on. And that's why the system in this case and the process has to be followed so we can respect the suspect's due process and his constitutional rights, as well as state law and rights here, as well as the integrity of the investigation. Any other questions? Okay. Oh, yes. So it's a misdemeanor citation. So basically, it's a release from custody. So technically, by the law, he was arrested and released this morning at his residence, which is in the neighborhood where the incident took place. And, and the important thing to highlight is that the dog was his dog. This is not a neighbor's dog. This is not uh, a strange dog. This is the, the suspect's dog who got out of his yard and wandered into someone else's yard. Correct. He was not booked in, into yeah. the facility. He was cited and released for a misdemeanor charge of, of animal cruelty. And that does, does that follow up serving jail time? Yes, okay. if convicted. Yeah. Any other questions? Do you have like a block where it happened? Or I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Uh, do you have like general area where you can show about where it happened? Like a block maybe? The 1000 block of 7th Avenue? Oh. Yes, and it's in, it's in the original press release, and that's kind of why we're here, is I wanted to, instead of giving you guys nuggets at a time and just giving piecemeal information, I would have rather just had a press conference and addressed everyone and all the outlets together as one and answer any questions. But there's certain things, obviously, due to the sensitive nature of this specific investigation, because it relates to an animal, that people's emotions are extremely high. Uh, it's circulating out on social media that they want to, that the community wants to do a protest tomorrow at City Hall. I would urge them to, uh, to exercise their constitutional right to assembly. However, uh, we will have officers monitoring that event and with the hopes of, that they hear me on this press conference and they do not do a formal protest which could disrupt uh, the, 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 the nature of the city and the business of the city and traffic and, and pose, uh, it could pose an, a threat to the community by having a protest that is spontaneous and not pre-planned with permits in such, in such a fashion. Yes, sir. Um, if someone in the community witnesses what they believe to be animal cruelty, animal abuse, um, what steps should they take? So exactly what the reporting party did the day that the incident happened is they called uh, 911, they called our dispatch center, and that's exactly what I would urge everyone to do. If there's any concerns from the community, they can always get a hold of the police department, 911, uh, dispatch will send units out there. Um, and the important thing is don't take matters into your own hands and because ultimately it could lead to uh, you know, injury or death on either party and we want to avoid all that. We're here to protect everyone's rights uh, and make sure that everyone in this community is safe. Absolutely. Have the protests. Could you please elaborate on sure. why you don't think that having kind of the impromptu versus the more planned protest is appropriate in this case? Well, I think generally when, when and this is, this is my experience, when people protest, uh, it's because they're misinformed, they don't have all the facts. And I hope by the end of this press conference that you, the media, can put out the facts pertinent to this case and ensure that justice will be served and that our citizens in Caldwell don't have to ex exercise their First Amendment right to go to City Hall and protest. Uh, City Hall, if they want to protest, they can come in front of my station, protest here. Uh, City Hall is, is obviously down the street. Uh, my posture and our, our department's posture is to facilitate a peaceful protest in anyone's, uh, that's their First Amendment right. But hopefully my goal here is to mitigate that and ensure that everyone is safe and that anyone that wishes to protest understands that uh, they can't break the law when they're protesting. I want people to exercise their First Amendment right, and we will have officers there to ensure that they are safe as well and exercising their First Amendment right. Have you received concerns um, just like regarding like, people taking 
taking this into the kind of their own hands? Like, is that something that they're aware of, or is it more just these social media comments, or where, you, I guess, where is that narrative yeah. headed? At, at this point, there's no specific threats uh, to the individual that's, uh, that was, is accused of doing this. Um, he's obviously a suspect. He's innocent until proven guilty, which is our you know, constitutional right here in the, in the United States. Uh, however, these are, this is more the rhetoric on Nextdoor, uh, which is a social media app, uh, and also on Facebook and the different social media platforms, which has all come to my attention as the chief of police. Any other questions regarding this incident? And, and I want to I want to conclude this by saying, you know, uh, we we saw the video. It's extremely disturbing uh, to me, to my staff, to anyone that views this video, uh, including everyone in the community. And their 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 concerns are valid. We hear them. We see them. We feel them. But we just have to. Uh, remain calm, let the investigators do their job, let the county prosecuting attorney do their job, work in partnership with them to bring justice. And that's, that's what I'll end on that. Moving into some more news today, I was informed earlier this, uh, today by the Federal Bureau of Investigation, uh, the FBI, in, related, in relating to the uh, former Lieutenant Joey Hoadley um, criminal indictments. And these are all public, record, public documents now. Uh, that there were two additional charges filed against Mr. Hoadley today in federal court. The first charge, which is count three on the original indictment, is tampering with a witness by harassment. The second charge is count number four, which is tampering with documents. That's all the information I have at this time on that matter. Uh, it's obviously uh, pending and they're, they're still litigating that case. Um, so everything that the media has is what I have from PACER and from online, uh, and that's, that's all the information I have. That. Any questions on that? Yes, sir. Uh, was the kind of reaction from the Caldwell Police Department to the additional charges that were uh, filed today? That's, that's a good question. Uh, I think people are just, they want this matter to be closed and they want to move past this and uh, not distracted and, and it's kind of noise at this point and our officers need to get back to doing their job and protecting and serving this community that they swore to uphold and protect. Sure. That gray, gray area. Can you comment anything on how those cases are pending, or have we come to any conclusions on those? No conclusions on that. Uh, what I can tell you is that those uh, those officers, one former and five current, are uh, under investigation for decertification. However, that investigation has been put on hold because under IDAPA law, if there's a pending criminal case or the pending internal affairs investigation, then uh, Idaho Post cannot do a parallel investigation. So. Uh, we have internal affairs investigators currently working on those employees right now, those five current employees, uh, and they're looking into that. So with the intent of either exonerating folks that are accused of doing things or disciplining them or up to termination. Uh, because the citizens in Caldwell deserve to have the most police officers on the street uh, doing their job to keep this place safe. And it's, it's, it's been a very big burden on me as, an, as the manager of this organization to staff our cars appropriately to staff our investigations appropriately because that's five officers that all had an instrumental role in doing different things in this organization and they are still working they're being paid uh, they're just assigned to administrative duties right now um, and they're not handling any cases and they're not actually handling radio calls do we know if any additional charges have been filed on Hodley, or should we expect these to be the last one at this point i don't know uh, that's that would be up to the fbi to disclose that but i don't know okay. thank you any other questions? Sir? Has the Caldwell uh, Police Department been cooperating with the FBI on the investigation? Yes. And, and, and I'll, I'll say to that, prior to my appointment here, um, there, there, was, there wasn't the most full cooperation from this organization with the FBI. Since I took over July 5th, I've had regular communications with the investigators assigned to this case. And I want to ensure the public that uh, if they have any complaints or they want to report misconduct, they can call us. They can call the FBI, they can call uh, anyone, but I will take them seriously. And at this point, uh, due to the nature of the criminal case pending, there's a lot of people that are coming forward with information, and I would encourage that people continue to do that, but we have to respect the time frame and allow us to do our job to investigate all these claims. Did these charges, these charges come as a surprise? Uh, in what context? The, the new charges today, did it not come as a 
No, I, I was told uh, from our FBI partners that more charges could be pending, but that they would let me know if, if any uh, were concrete. And today I was officially let, uh, let known by the FBI. Um, is there any way that you can elaborate on the charges, um, maybe what they're related to at all? Uh, other than what's in this PACER document, count three, tampering with a witness by harassment, um, you know, obviously someone is a protected witness by the FBI and is testifying and it appears that Mr. Hodley may have or is alleged to try to dissuade that witness from testifying under oath. I understand you might not be able to provide the information to us, but are you guys even aware of like, who these people are or is it like just the FBI? Control? The FBI, because it's a, it's a top secret grand jury that convenes and so everyone is sworn to secrecy and there are certain things that uh, I'm not aware of uh, and that's just the nature of criminal investigations because as you know, uh, people talk and it could, it could implicate the case further down the road. Um, what else, I guess, is being done, obviously, in your you know, new leadership, things, there's a lot going on. What else is kind of being done to make sure people in Caldwell feel safe around police officers? Because obviously, it's, you know, there's been quite a few officers, you know, there's Codley and there's other five, six officers. You know, people might have some concerns. Sure. What is being done to make them feel safe? So sit, we're, I'm looking at systems and controls and basically accountability and transparency. And, and our since I took over, our social media platform has increased uh, dramatically, as you guys are aware, well aware. Um, you know, I'm really stressing on, on all of our staff here, both sworn and civilian, uh, to, to be professional. And I will hold people accountable. And I will hold supervisors accountable, uh, specifically with my lieutenants that are here. Uh, it starts with them. And, you know, and I've had meetings every day. I've met with every employee one-on-one -on -one, uh, since I took over. And I've heard their concerns. I've heard their frustrations. And the important thing to the community is that, you know, uh, you have to give us the benefit of the doubt. And you have to not categorize all police officers as bad. We hire from the human gene pool. And when humans are in positions of employment, whether it's here or McDonald's or Chick-fil-A, humans make mistakes. And I'm not trying to justify what the actions of Mr. Hoadley or the, the allegations, but what I would say is we have about 99% of our employees here that do a professional job and that actually reported these allegations to the FBI. It wasn't the community that did that. The community's involved in that piece, but the initial allegations that were reported came from within this organization. And that's what the community needs to know is that we have courageous people here that are defending this badge and representing it to the best of their ability. Like last week when we had two police officers who were not trained in swift water rescue who jumped in a fast, cold paced uh, moving river and rescued a man who does not and has a history with the police not liking the police. So that came full circle and that's the type of th the things that we do every day that unfortunately our community doesn't really see that we hear the bad news because bad news sells. So I want to say as the leader of this organization that it starts with accountability, transparency, but also highlighting the phenomenal work that our employees do every single day being ran by the mayor of Caldwell who is extremely supportive of the work that we do in our lovely city council who has the faith and confidence in our police officers and our civilian staff to do, the, to do their job to the best of their ability. Um, we are giving officers and civilian staff raises, and you know I'm a firm believer that if we treat our employees well, then they treat the community well, right? And so happy cops are productive cops, and productive cops reduce crime. And the mission of any police organization in this country is to reduce crime. So when we look at that from a, from a leadership perspective, the way we treat our employees has a direct correlation with how the public perceives us. And the biggest thing is restoring legitimacy here in this, in this police department with the public. I've gone on uh, Spanish radio. I'm trying to re actively recruit more Hispanic personnel, both sworn and civilian, because this city is 36% Hispanic, and we need to mirror that community that we serve. And a lot of it, we deal with humans just like we're humans, but the police need to be the people, and the people need to be part of our police department. And I'm a firm believer in, in that concept of, uh, of procedural justice, giving people a voice, giving people a chance to be heard, uh, both internally and externally. And I am open to meeting anyone in the community. I have tried to restore all lost partnerships with our allied agencies, as well as our community members who may have not trusted the police uh, lately, to bring some sort of dialogue back and relationship back that has been lost because of this uh, pending FBI investigation. Thank you for the question. Anyone else? Um, is there anyone else who currently works for the department that's under investigation? That's a very vague question. As far as what, sir? Um, 
Is there anyone else, I guess, in the department that, you know, would be in charge of, say, that clean and that sort of thing? Not related to that. But every day, as you know, uh, we have, we're a business. Police departments are a business. And when we do business, we upset people. And people make complaints all day in every police department. Just to give it a perspective, in Los Angeles, where I came from, they field about 6,000 official internal affairs investigations a year. Now, they have 13,000 employees. So not all those allegations would be sustained. A majority of them are unfounded. In, in this case here, with the more exposure we have and the more transparent we are and the more accountable we seem and more legitimate that we are with the community, uh, the public can expect that more people will come forward and report what they believe are violations of law, policy, um, uh, or procedure, and that we will investigate those. I will say, though, that uh, obviously things have ramped up with investigations, and as the, investigate, the big investigation continues, more and more folks uh, could be inv investigated later on, but they could also be exonerated. Um, but the important thing is that we are working on this um, and that I take everything seriously and that I will do everything in my power to restore legitimacy with the community here because they deserve it. And then you mentioned uh, as this investigation kind of continues, there's new information coming in um, just, you know, from people. What new information is coming in? Well, there could be any, any, anything coming in, but, you know, people are, could be reporting things that are, they're upset about from 2016, 2015, 2010, uh, that they're now, they now feel empowered to come forward because they feel like we are gonna take them serious. So it could be minor policy violations, uh, an officer didn't give me a business card, it could be anything. Um, but the nature of this current FBI investigation, the five that, that have been uh, officially investigated or are being investigated by post, um, that's the extent of those. Um, but they haven't been interviewed yet, so they might you know, reveal something during a confidential interview that implicates someone else. And then that would spider web into someone else, and then so on and so forth. And that's why I asked the public and the media to be to be very patient with me and this organization because we are we are working tirelessly to get to the bottom of this investigation. Um, and you know, and just it's an overall. Uh, there's there's hundreds of people that were interviewed in this investigation uh, by the FBI and the, and the partners that work with the FBI. And so, the investigators assigned to my case regarding the five. Uh, have to sift through all that stuff and determine what they believe is is credible and and how they can basically uh, strategize their investigation. So it will take a long time. Um, I think for under private leadership, there was a comment that along with Hadley, there was maybe at least at least one other officer. I know that we obviously have the five now being investigated by post. Could you just clarify like what that meant? Because we heard you know there was at least maybe one other officer that might yes. be federal charges. Or yes. Is that actually so accurate? Is that maybe one of I yes. So, so, and I cannot name this individual, but I will tell you that I have been briefed by the Federal uh, Bureau of Investigation that they are looking at charging one additional person. Thank you for that question. Any other questions? Any questions? Ma'am, in the corner with the mask on you. I think oh, you have one. Me. I guess, yeah, is there okay. Well, uh, I, I'm working about 18 to 20 hours a day, and I can tell you there's a lot of things that uh, need to be looked at and evaluated. But as, as you know, uh, a big ship is very uh, tough to turn fast, quickly, as seen with the Titanic or any other you know, metaphor that we can use. But uh, yeah, there are things that we're looking at as far as hiring, training, recruitment, retention, uh, systems in place, policies, procedures. Just the overall way that this organization uh, has been running um, needs to be needs to be looked at. And what I what I'm doing in partnership with my lieutenants here um, is that we are looking at all these things with a under a microscope, metaphorically speaking. And we will be you know coming up with committees to a determine best practices in law enforcement and to identify what the needs of the community are, so we can get the buy-in from the community and make them feel like they're part of us. I can tell you that. Uh, the mission, vision, and values of the organization will be changed. Um, I am currently changing the name of Street Crimes, which is uh, historically known uh, as, our, as our gang unit on the street, which uh, is involved in this FBI investigation. The current members of that, of that unit uh, were not involved uh, in that investigation. We're not working that unit. Uh, some of them weren't even employed here during that time. But the name Street Crimes is, is there's a connotation between the old uh, unit and the new unit. So in order to get them to do their job without being 
stereotyped or profiled by the community uh, for doing their job to the best of their ability. Um, I'm going to change that name. We're changing their uniform appearance so they can look like us in uniform, and the community can feel safe knowing that they are doing their job and they are not those members. Uh, but there's a lot of little things like that, and some things are, are bigger and they take more time and they take money. You know, a lot of these things take budget. Um, if we're looking at technology, we're looking at possibly changing body cameras uh, to a different company to make it a little more in line with what is, nation, is acceptable nationwide. Um, but there's, there's a lot of things, like I said, I'm working long hours, and I want to thank my partner, uh, my assistant, Gabriella Godino, who's in the back. I want to thank Lieutenant Dave Wright, who's been working tirelessly on this, Lieutenant Doug Winfield, who is running patrol right now. And so reorganizing the department, that was part of the thing that I did is I, is I restructured kind of who people report to and what their responsibilities are and changing the leadership up. And so Doug is a great addition to patrol. Um, he, he is overseeing um, basically uh, just over half of our workforce that report directly to him under his command and control. And he's doing a phenomenal job seven days a week, 24 hours a day, someone calls the police, someone under Lieutenant Winfield's command and control is providing service to them. Uh, which is why he briefed you on the animal cruelty matter. Uh, but it takes, a, it takes a big team here. Our records, our records uh, ladies that work in there, our, our professional staff, um, you know, they are working all day long and unfortunately they're taking the brunt of all the, the requests from you, from the media, from the community, from angry citizens. They're the ones answering the phone and getting yelled at, getting hung up on, getting threats from community members uh, because, you know, folks that wear this badge uh, are, are basically have tarnished uh, the reputation and so they uh, are the ones that are hearing, hearing it all day long and then by the time it gets to me you know it's maybe a day later um, so I'm trying to reestablish that communication and really give them hope that uh, we will take their burden off their shoulders mm -hmm. so they can do their job and handle all the you know public records requests and do and, and, and process all the reports that our officers are taking every day anything else Yes, sir. Uh, within the window of time that you've come in, um, what positive cultural changes um, do you think have been established or that you've seen? Well, that probably, you might want to interview the officers because that would be very subjective of me to say positive. But I can tell you that just based on what I've seen and what I've heard and my interactions with every employee in this organization, minus one, who I'm meeting with tomorrow, um, he's been light duty and at home, uh, has been very positive. People feel like they, they, they've, said that the weight has been taken off their shoulders, they, they are now heard, they're restored some confidence to come do their job. And you gotta, you, gotta, you gotta understand, and the community needs to understand is, you know, this organization went through COVID, as did the rest of the world, went through mandates, went through scrutiny, went through the 2020 uh, sentiment of George Floyd and, and all that tragic stuff that happened. And these folks still came to work every day and then when, when this story broke, they still came to work. And yeah, we lost some people, but majority of the people that we've lost have, have left for, for higher pay. They've gone to Meridian, they've gone to Boise, they've gone to Ada County, they've gone to different agencies. But I can say that in, in the last week, we've had more interest in officers from different agencies and new police officer recruits wanting to work Caldwell PD because of the positive changes that we're doing here. And it's not me, it's, it's everyone else that's doing it. It's, it's the team. And, and it's the support of the mayor, and it's the support of the city council, and everyone comes together to make this place great. And I think that that needs to be highlighted because a lot of people just see CPD or Caldwell PD or just a police officer, and automatically, you know, they had an incident, so they just don't trust the officers. And, and, and that's, that's totally acceptable too. So what I'm trying to stress on my employees is that whether you're a professional staffer or you're a police officer, the one encounter you have with a, with a person in the public could be the only encounter that person ever has with a police officer. So it needs to be nothing but professional and is exactly what I expect because that person's you know, uh, perception or, or view of law enforcement because of George Floyd, because of the 2020 defund movement um, has kind of been skewed. And that's the important thing with this FBI investigation is that the public needs to feel confident that we are doing what we need to do to cooperate, but also to move past this and restore the, the once great reputation that CPD had. Thank you. Any other questions on that? Thank you very much. This concludes our press conference. I appreciate your time.
information. <laughs> I know, it's like, it's gonna take so long to send something.